Welcome to FT Markets. On March 30th, rival exchanges, the CME Group and Intercontinental Exchange, will go head to head in the cocoa futures market with new euro denominated contracts. I'm joined by Edward George, head of research at EcoBank, to talk about the significance. So, Edward, why are these contracts important? Well, futures contracts are essential to ensure the flow of cocoa from the farmer to the chocolate producers. Every season, the farmer needs to know that they can sell their cocoa, and the whole time, the major chocolate companies need to guarantee a supply of cocoa, and the traders sit in the middle. And the essential mechanism they use is the futures contract, which enables them to buy a set amount of cocoa for a set value and quality during different stages of the year. This way they can mitigate any risks such as uh, times of the season when there's more cocoa or less or when prices move. But the key players here are the chocolate makers. And if you look at this chart here, you can see that the three leading companies in the world, Mars, Mondelez, which is the trading arm of Kraft Foods, and Nestle control around 60% of the cocoa that is produced. They depend on having a regular supply of cocoa beans so they can get the chocolate to the market. And they really are the ones who call the shots when it comes to futures contracts. Now, this is CME Group's first move into physically delivered cocoa. Can you talk us through a bit of the background? Yes, well, traditionally there have been two Cocoa Futures contracts for physical delivery that have dominated the market. There is the London contract, priced um, in pounds sterling. Uh, that's been going since 1928. And there is the uh, New York contract, priced in US dollars. Um, both of them are run by um, ICE. But now CME is looking to disrupt the picture by introducing its own euro-denominated contract, which will come in on Monday. And not to be outdone, ICE is also introducing its own euro-denominated contract on Monday. So we're going to go from two contracts to four contracts. So why is the euro-denominated contract important for the cocoa market? Well, there is certainly a logic to having a euro-denominated contract. If we look at the supply of beans to the, the world market, 60% of them come from Cote d'Ivoire and from Cameroon. Both countries have the CFA franc, and that is uh, pegged to the euro. And then around 60% of manufacturing of chocolate takes place in Europe. So that's also in euros. So if you are particularly a small exporter of chocolate from, or uh, of cocoa beans from Africa, there's a real benefit here. You don't have to get in a price hedge to protect yourself against movements in the US dollar. I think also CME is really trying to address some of the problems that there have been with futures contracts. One of the issues is how quickly you can get your cocoa out of uh, the warehouse when the contract is due. And there have been problems with delays. And this, of course, can disrupt trading strategies. So I know that CME is offering a much quicker turnaround time than ICE is. And there are also various other kind of benefits they're trying to bring in to make people want to adopt this new contract over the existing ICE contract. So what will the decisive factor be in determining who wins? Well, I think um, probably the key players here are going to be um, the, uh, the chocolate companies at the end of the day. They are the ones who, uh, who call the shots. They decide uh, the kind of contracts that they're prepared to enter into with the trading houses. And if they say to a trading house, we want uh, to price against a euro-denominated contract, then the trading houses will, um, will have to basically go for those contracts. The issue, though, that we have here is liquidity. There is also very strained liquidity at the moment on the two existing contracts, which means not necessarily enough people going in and buying these contracts. As a trader, you only want to go into a contract if you know there are a lot of other people involved. You can always buy and sell or swap your contract if you need to when the market changes. And so if traders don't see this in the new uh, contracts, they won't want to be involved. It really is a classic chicken in the egg situation. If the, uh, if the chocolate makers demand these contracts, they will only do so if there's a liquid market. But traders will only enter into the market if there's demand from the cocoa companies. Edward, thank you very much. My pleasure. So the battle of cocoa, who's going to win? All eyes will be on trading screens from Monday onwards.